Why, hello, Algebra 2. Today, we are going to talk about these things called determinants. But before we go into determinants, let's recap what we know about the multiplicative inverse. First, we know the notation is a raised to the negative 1 power. And it's an inverse only if the inverse times the matrix is equal to the matrix times the inverse, which is equal to the identity, which means that a and its inverse must both be square. And we also know that the inverse doesn't always exist, which is where determinants are going to come into play here. Now, we also know how to find the inverse. We can use matrix equations where a is our inverse or matrix that we want to invert, and x is a matrix filled with the variables. And we use matrix multiplication and systems of equations, and we solve for x, which gives us the inverse. We can also use the incredibly tedious process of Gauss-Jordan elimination where we set up the multiply augmented matrix with the matrix A on one side, the identity on the other side. We use a tedious series of row operations to transform the left side into the identity, which then gives us the inverse on the right side. And we also saw, and this is super important, there was a formula for the two by two matrix, which I had you figure out in class. And the formula swapped the A and the D, and it made the C and the B opposite, and it multiplied everything by a coefficient, which was 1 over AD minus BC. And this AD minus BC thing is actually what we're talking about when we talk about determinants. So in the investigation in class, we realized that this AD minus BC could not equal 0 if the matrix was invertible. So this AD minus BC determined whether or not our matrix had an inverse. And so guess what mathematicians started calling it? They started calling AD minus BC the determinant of a two by two matrix. And so they started to explore this concept of taking a matrix and boiling it down to a single constant. And if the constant was zero, the matrix didn't have an inverse. And if it wasn't zero, there happened to be an inverse. And actually that number, that determinant, played a role in the actual values in the inverse. And so mathematicians realized that every square matrix has a determinant. And they figured them out by looking at the patterns that emerged when they were solving systems of equations and then when they were finding inverses to matrices. So now let's talk about notation with our two by two matrix. If I have some matrix, column one is A1, A2, column two is B1, B2. If I want you to find the determinant of the matrix, one way to write it is like this, DET, open parentheses, name of matrix. You'll also see it written in a way that looks like absolute value bars, but they're not really absolute values in the context of matrices. And most often you'll see it written like this, where the matrix will be written and instead of like closing off the bar, see how the when we want to denote a matrix we close off those bars, you just knock those bars off and that's another way of writing the determinant. And we know from looking for the formula for an inverse of a two by two that I multiply these two and I multiply these two and I subtract them and that's the determinant. Okay. Multiply the main diagonal, two times two is four, subtract off the other two numbers multiplied together, which is negative three, which gives me a determinant of seven. Now, you may be wondering if this transfers to higher order matrices, meaning three by three, four by four, five by five, six by six, whatever. And of course it does. All square matrices have determinants. Now, you're only gonna be responsible to find determinants of two by two and three by three matrices. And I'm gonna show you how to find the three by three. The procedure is to add the products of the downward diagonals and subtract the products of the upward diagonals. Now, downward diagonal is the traditional diagonal, like the main diagonal, the A11, A22, A33. And then you're thinking, well, dude, there's only like one diagonal, so why does it say add the products of them? Well, that's because in order to find the determinant of a three by three matrix, you have to create more diagonals. And you create more diagonals by rewriting the first two columns over here. So A11, A21, 
A31, A12, A22, and A32. So just by repeating the first two columns over here, I create the number of diagonals that I need. And I need three diagonals that are going downward. So I'm going to multiply this set of numbers, this set of numbers, and then that set of numbers, and add them together. So those are the products of the downward diagonals. And the upward diagonals are the ones that go in the other direction. And I'll draw these in red. So this is an upward diagonal. This is an upward diagonal. And this is an upward diagonal. And I'm going to subtract those. And if you think about the two by two, this process is exactly the same with the two by two. I took the downward diagonal, multiplied the product. I took the product of the downward diagonal and subtracted off the product of the upward diagonal. Now with the two by two, there's only one of each, but with a three by three, I have three downwards and three upwards. And this is how I find the determinant by hand. Now, of course, your calculator will very quickly find the determinant for you. But let's do one example by hand before we revert to calculator work. So I want to find the determinant of A, given that A is this matrix here. And there are three main steps. First step is to rewrite the first two columns, 0, 3, 4, 2, negative 1, 0. And I have to find the downward products. Luckily, there are zeros in place, which makes this a lot easier if there are zeros. So downward diagonal 1 is 0 times negative 1 times 1, which is 0. And then I have 2 times 2 times 4, which is 16. And 1 times 3 times 0, which is 0. So I add all these together, and I get 16. And then I have to look at the upward diagonals. So this diagonal is 4 times negative 1 times 1, which is negative 4. 0 times 2 times 0, which is 0. And then 1 times 3 times 2, which is 6. Now what I'm supposed to do, I'm supposed to subtract off these values. So minus negative 4 minus 6 gives me 14. 